Welcome to The Educator. My name is Martin Boerta. Please enjoy this presentation. In this presentation, we are taking a closer look at the themes found in William Shakespeare's Macbeth. The reversal of values and equivocation. The witches are associated with ambiguous statements and equivocation, and statements that suggest that what seems right is not really right, and what seems wrong is not really wrong. The reversal of values. For example, they say, fair is foul, and foul is fair, and talk about a battle being lost and won. The witches are good at equivocation. When they and their apparitions prophesy Macbeth's future in Act 4, they avoid lying, but they use the truth to make it sound as though no one can harm Macbeth, and this is not true. Even the witch's appearance is ambiguous. Banku tells them, you should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. The ambiguity in the play produces uncertainty, but also gives Macbeth false hope. After Macbeth is made Thane of Cordor, Banku warns Macbeth not to believe everything the witches say because they could tell him honest trifles or truths about small things so that he will trust them and they can tempt him to do evil. The witches' ambiguity and equivocation make us examine what is true and what is false through them and the way Macbeth blindly believes their prophecies. Shakespeare makes us look at the way we view things and makes us question our understanding of right and wrong. Appearance and reality, or hypocrisy. Throughout the play we are reminded that what appears real is not always so. There are many examples of deceit and hypocrisy, and the Macbeths often put on a facade of good to hide their evil plans. Duncan is deceived by two men he trusts, the Thane of Cordor and Macbeth. The Macbeths act like gracious hosts but murder their guest, Duncan. Lady Macbeth smears the grooms with blood to make it look like they are guilty of murder, and Macbeth pretends to kill them out of rage. Macbeth asks seemingly innocent questions about Banku's plans, but is actually finding out what Banku's movements are so he can send murderers after him. The prophecies of the witches and their apparitions give Macbeth a false sense of security. They tell him that he need not be afraid until Burnham Wood moves to Dunsinane, so that it appears as though he will never need to be afraid. In reality, the wood does move, in the form of branches used to camouflage the soldiers who attack Macbeth. Throughout the play, it is uncertain if things like the dagger that leads Macbeth to Duncan's room, Banku's ghost, and the apparitions are real or imagined. The overthrow of the natural order, or order versus disorder. Macbeth kills the king. This disrupts the social and political order. Nature then goes crazy. In Act 2, Scene 4, Ross and an old man discuss how horses each eat each other and daylight disappears under a dark sky. Elizabethans believe that if the king was good and virtuous, the country would do well. Macbeth is not the rightful ruler of Scotland. He has killed the king and is a usurper and under his reign, peace and order are destroyed and Scotland becomes sick. Lady Macbeth's appeal to the spirits to unsex her and fill her breast with gall instead of milk goes against nature because she rejects her natural feminine qualities. After they murder the king, the Macbeths are never again able to sleep peacefully and eventually Lady Macbeth goes insane. Macduff was born by Caesarean section, or untimely ripped, rather than born from his mother. This birth is unnatural, as it is unnatural for Burnham Wood to march to Dunsinane Hill. When these two unnatural things come together, Macbeth is killed. Malcolm takes up his rightful position as king, and order is restored to Scotland.
ambition and power. Macbeth is a play about the destructive power of ambition. Macbeth's tragic flaw is that he wants personal status and power. Lady Macbeth wants the same for her husband, and they are both prepared to do anything to get it. Their ambition destroys their own morality, and it destroys Scotland. Malcolm's ambition is not like Macbeth's, because he does not want to get rid of Macbeth so that he can be king himself. He wants to get rid of him because Macbeth is a tyrant, and Scotland needs to be saved from Macbeth's tyranny, and to be restored and healed. Even though he becomes king, Malcolm is not ambitious for his own glory. Macbeth's ambition is filled by the witch's predictions and by his wife, Lady Macbeth. However, the witches never suggest any action. Macbeth and Lady Macbeth decide what to do for themselves. The play shows the consequences of uncontrolled ambition and power. The Macbeths do not enjoy their power. They are both haunted by their actions. Lady Macbeth sleepwalks, loses her mind, and finally kills herself. Macbeth's tyranny grows as he kills more and more people to try to keep his position. He becomes a monster and is hunted down and killed. Finally, in Act 5, Scene 5, when he is deserted by his thanes and surrounded by enemy armies, he hears that his wife is dead. Macbeth then feels that life has become meaningless and he is merely an unimportant, poor player on the stage of life. Fate and Free Will The play raises questions about fate, or destiny, and free will. Would the witches' prophecy have come true if Macbeth had done nothing to make them come true? Or did Macbeth have to take action to make their predictions come true? The witches make predictions, but never suggest actions. Macbeth decides to take action so he can become king. Banku resists thinking about doing something wicked to make the witches' predictions about him come true. Macbeth tries to control fate once he kills Duncan, and then finds that once he has started, he has to keep on trying to control it. He has to kill Banku and Macduff's family. Through trying to control fate, he ends up with nothing, and is killed. Lastly, we take a look at kingship and tyranny. Macbeth raises the question of what it means to be a good ruler. Duncan is a humble and honest king, but too trusting. Malcolm does not have his father's trusting nature and tests Macduff's loyalty. In doing this, he highlights the qualities of what he calls king-becoming graces and reveals his own noble character. Edward, the king of England, is a virtuous king who, it is believed, has heavenly powers and can heal the sick by touching them. When other characters talk about Macbeth, they almost always call him a tyrant and almost never a king. This emphasizes the fact that he is an usurper and a murderer. Thank you for watching The Educator. My name is Martin Boerter. Please subscribe on YouTube for more presentations.